Hey guys, Sean here from Quadstech. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Deepcool Matrix, Matrix, not really sure how it's pronounced, uh, Matrix 70 Add RGB 3F. So as the name suggests, this is the same as the Matrix 70, but they've added an RGB strip and three RGB fans. So let's take a look around this thing and see what we get for about 140 Australian dollars. So as we look at the front side of the case, it features one sheet of tempered glass, which is held in place by two aluminum thumb screws and it slots into the bottom, which allows for easy removal of the glass panel. This glass panel is also three millimeters thick and can be a little bit daunting once you actually get it in your hands. I, I thought it was, it was quite thin, but still strong nonetheless, as it is tempered glass. As we look to the front of the case, we have another piece of tempered glass, which is held in place by our quick, quick release button, located on the left-hand side of the actual panel. Push this button and the panel will hinge forward and is easily lifted out by two brackets at the bottom. With the front tempered glass removed, we can see the three included Deepcool RF120 RGB fans. Uh, these fans will do from 500 to 1500 RPM with a max airflow of 56.5 cubic foot per minute at 27 decibels. So this whole front assembly is held in by six screws and once you pull it out, you, you actually have access to the dust filter which is actually located behind the fans. Um, an interesting design choice, obviously one based purely on aesthetics. This dust filter was fairly difficult to get in and out because it was held in by 10 little tabs. So it wasn't the easiest thing to get in or out and your fans are going to get dusty anyway because it is behind the fans. So kudos to Deepcool trying to protect the case from dust, but the fans are going to get fairly dusty with the, in this configuration. This is also being called a radiator mount, so you can mount three 120 millimeter or 140 millimeter fans in this front section alongside a radiator. So you can pre-mount everything and then put it all back into the case. So as I move to the back of the case, it is pretty self-explanatory. We have one panel with the same mounting system as the front. We have two aluminum thumb screws, which you just remove, and then the panel just hinges out and lifts away with great ease. You can also see the air vent on the left-hand side, which gives air to those front fans, same as the front. With the back panel removed, you can see there's quite a lot going on inside the back of this case. So we have the cables, coming down from the, the front I.O. So your power button, uh, LEDs, etc., USBs all coming down the middle. We have the RGB controller on the left-hand side of the case, uh, which is all cable tied up in a bunch alongside the fans themselves. We have the two three and a half inch or two and a half inch hard drive sled down the bottom. And we also have the whole basement where the power supply and everything sits. As you can see, there's plenty of room behind the actual motherboard tray for CPU coolers, etc., and plenty of tabs for cable ties to route your cables neatly. As we move to the back of the case, it's pretty self-explanatory. We have room for seven PCIe expansion slots. We actually have a cover that goes over the PCI expansion slots, which doubles as a vertical GPU mount. And we have our single 120 millimeter fan at the rear of the case. As you move to the top of the case, it features a magnetic dust filter, which is actually sticks really well to the top of the case. And you can also get 320 millimeter or three 140 millimeter fans up in this top section uh, for radiators or just standard air cooling. Uh, the only criticism up here is that the, the top construction of where you're gonna mount your radiator is actually quite thin and it has a, quite a bit of flex to it, so I'm not really sure how much weight you can hang off of there. Alongside that, we have our power button, two USB, USB 3.0, one USB 2.0, headphone, microphone jacks, and an LED button for the integrated LED, LED controller, which also doubles as a hard drive or SSD indicator light. As we swing around to the bottom of the case, it features one big dust filter that covers both power supply and an optional 120 millimeter fan you can install in the bottom. Uh, as you're down here, you can actually see where you can relocate the drive sled in the basement to give you a bit more room for cabling. So it will move about 
30 to 40 millimeters to the right. So as we move into the case, we can see the glass bottom basement. Uh, that is a quite a good feature for this case for the price point. So it just features one of the aluminum thumb screws and you take that thumb screw out and it just lifts out with ease. So the two holes in this glass are for that hard drive sled that I was speaking about just before. So when you move it slightly to the front, then that thumb screw then moves along with it. So as we look at the motherboard tray itself, you can see that there is plenty of room from anything from an ITX to an EATX motherboard. It also features two other mounts for two and a half inch SSDs. So if you have some SSDs that you really wanna show off inside this case, this case actually gives you the option to do that. So you can mount them the same way or you can mount them opposing each other so that the cables actually come out in the middle so as we pan down the inside front of the case, you can see how that dust filter sits on the back of the fans. So in the accessories bag, you get one instruction booklet for the Matrix 70. You get one fan splitter, which will do up to five fans. And you also get two addressable RGB cables to suit different vendor motherboards. You get a bunch of cable ties and you also get a bag of screws for fans, uh, more posts for the, for the motherboard tray and some various motherboard fixing screws. Okay, so now I'm going to rebuild my daily setup in this case because I think it's going to be a pretty good case for a daily setup and I want to have the full build experience to see if there is any other issues that I may have missed during uh, the actual overview of the case. So I'm going to be using my Crosshair 6 Extreme with the Ryzen 1700, uh, a GTX 1080 Ti Poseidon, uh, a ROG 1200, ROG Thor 1200 watt power supply, uh, the Deep Cool Castle 240 RGB CPU cooler, all in one. I uh, haven't used this one before, so it's gonna be a little bit of review on this cooler as well. Uh, some Silicon Power X Turbine DDR4 memory and some Silicon Power SSDs as well. So I'm going big with everything because just because the manufacturer says that it supports uh, certain sizes, EATX and big power supplies, it's a different thing when you actually try and put it into the case and see how actually functional that is. So that's why I'm going big with everything. I'm gonna jam it all in there, see how it goes, and we'll wrap it up with a conclusion. So conclusion time, uh, yeah, this case was actually quite fun to build in. I had no dramas whatsoever. The, the side panels coming off with just the two screws, um, front and rear, made it really, really easy to gain access to the front and rear of the case. Uh, the power supply I thought was gonna be a real pain in the ass, but once I worked out that it actually went in from the front and not the back like a lot of other cases, it actually went in there fine. I thought I had to remove the little plastic strip that actually held the, the, um, the glass basement on. Uh, but no, you, you, obviously you gotta put your cables in first. Uh, with the hard drive sled here, it did make it a little bit tight, but that can be moved. That's why there's two holes in the glass. Uh, the RGB works really well. I'm just using the integrated controller for now, but you can 
sync it to, you know, to an Asus motherboard, to an ASRock Gigabyte, like all the ecosystems that are available, this board gives you all the connectors to sync them all up. So you can just cycle through the colors if you want, you know, and it, and it gives you plenty of options, plenty of colors to actually, you know, use for day-to-day -day thing. So the only thing I really didn't like about the case is the fact that this rear fan here, because the back of the case isn't, uh, doesn't have a recess for the IO and everything. If you have a, a motherboard like I've got my Crosshair 6, it actually covers, you know, half of the IO. So I, I can't actually see that Crosshair 6. So if you do have a motherboard that has some sort of um, RGB LED, you know, text or graphic or something, then you might want to look at taking that rear fan out because it does block half of the IO shield. The only thing you're missing inside the case, of course, is rubber grommets, but personally, I didn't miss them at all. It was actually made routing cables a lot easier because you're not fighting with the actual grommet. Um, the only thing you have to be mindful of is when you're running cables past those holes that you're not using to, you know, to, to route them in a way that you're not gonna see them or else you are gonna see them as they pass um, past the holes. So you can actually mount a graphics card vertically as well in this case. Um, that's what the little bit on the back is for, the little cover piece that um, does sit proud of the actual back of the case. So you take that off and then you can use a third party uh, vertical GPU mount and then run your uh, graphics card vertically. That's probably only gonna leave you maybe 25 millimeters, which is roughly an inch. Uh, of room between your graphics card and the front glass. So I'm sure that you can run your card vertically, but it may get hot. I haven't done testing uh, because I don't have a third party vertical uh, graphics card uh, mount. But yeah, that's something to be mindful of that you are gonna be sitting fairly close to your glass. So yeah, I probably wouldn't test those boundaries too far. But yeah, overall uh, the case goes together and comes apart really easy. I had plenty of room behind to hide all my cables and the, the, the hard drives actually get plenty of airflow from those front fans. So, you know, they're not gonna heat up at all. You've actually got space for your, you know, you can fit four SSDs and two hard drives in this case, plus all your M.2s that your motherboard may hold. So you can get plenty of storage in it. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna use this case as my editing rig slash daily driver. Just gonna see how it goes for dust and thermals, basically. They're the only two things I need to worry about. So overall build quality uh, of the case was, look, you can tell that it's been made to a budget, but you get a lot of features for the case. You know, you've got tempered glass everywhere, uh, but the actual, you know, like the top radiator mount that was quite flimsy, uh, and also the, uh, the motherboard tray as well had a bit of flex in it, so I wouldn't go hanging like really heavy graphics cards off of it. I mean, the Poseidon's not a light card by any means. So, you know, I'm hanging lots of weight off of it and, you know, there is a bit of flex there, but all in all, yeah, it's a really good case. Uh, so pricing on this case varies a little bit here in Australia. At M-Wave, they had it for $159, but both UMart and PLE had this case for $100. $39. As for American sites, Newegg had it for $109.99 and Amazon had it for $99.99. Uh, is it worth that? Yeah, I think you get a lot of feature set for that money. Uh, and you also get the three RGB fans and RGB strips, so you gotta factor all that in. So the RGB fans from Deep Cool alone are worth about $45. And then you got an RGB strip, you know, that can be anywhere from $5 to $30, depending on how good the strip is. So yeah, you, I think the base model of this was worth like 120, so for an extra 40 bucks you get your fan and your RGB strip, plus your controller and all the rest of it. So yeah, I think it's a, it's a pretty good case for the money. It's basically, you put it all together, all the accessories and everything supplied by uh, Deepcool were really good, so it allows you to use any motherboard that you wish. They give you plenty of screws, uh, mounting hardware, all that kind of thing. So yeah, I have absolutely no problems with this case besides a little bit of build quality. But other than that, uh, big thumbs up for this case from Deep Cool. So this just about wraps it up for this one. Uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all on the next video.